Good evening. This is a special edition of Powerful Words with Caleb. Um, there were some questions that were put out there today, and um, I believed it was material that was pivotal to our understanding of the deep, deep state assault upon this nation. And uh, so I've, I feel it. Um, I feel compelled to do a, a small segment uh, to delve into this material that others have been uh, requesting or investigating. I found some content that really is really important. So I, I hope that you, you watch this and you review the material and that it, it'll lead you into a greater knowledge and understanding of what's going on. Um, really do appreciate your time as always. Uh, let me get straight to it. Okay, I'm gonna share, share some sites um, because I believe that uh, the knowledge has to be reviewed uh, by everyone out there. So we need to understand what we're looking at and what we're looking for. Uh, so let me get to get to those sites right away. Bear with me while I wait for the share. I hope everyone is doing well. And I pray that this material reaches you in a good health and um, good family situation, financial and otherwise. I'm gonna share my sound in case there's something on here that needs to be played. Okay, what we're starting out with is, um, there is a very, very um, clean looking character that has not been addressed and there's some interest because there there are WikiLeaks emails that have gone back and forth between uh, this fellow Mike Morell and uh, and Podesta. Um, they are curious emails. They um, it, it's very it looks as if they're speaking in a little bit back and forth in code and they and they only want to meet face to face which uh, immediately raises um, the hackles on one's neck because, you know, if you're only willing to meet face to face, it means that you need to share material that um, that you can't share over um, electronic means. And being as uh, this fellow was uh, uh, acting director of Central Intelligence or the deputy director of, of the CIA, uh, when that occurs, you can you can bet that there's something that's going to be shared of great import, and those emails were dated in March of 2016. Okay, um, Mike Morell, Michael Joseph Morell, uh, born September 4th, 1958, uh, former career intelligence analyst. We want to say former, but it's not former, folks. He served as the deputy director of Central Intelligence from 2010 to 2013, and twice as acting director, first in 2011, then from 2012 to 2013. He is now senior counsel uh, counselor and global chairman of geopolitical risk practice at Beacon Global Strategies, a consulting firm in Washington, D.C. Now we're looking at Wikipedia, so, you know, this is just common information, but it's what we do with this information that, that gives us the information that we're looking for. First of all, we want to see that he went to Georgetown University, so he is a D.C.ite. He is someone familiar with Georgetown, and Georgetown is a, you know, we're, we're talking about... Um, it has significant connections. It is a Jesuit college, so it has connections with Rome. Uh, it also has a known connection with Saudi Arabia, as Saudi Arabia um, funds one, uh, one of their global schools there. Uh, both uh, Bill Clinton and the Bushes have uh, relationships with uh, Georgetown. It, it is a network um, identity just as in anyone going to Harvard is a network identity and this fellow has both of those credentials so you know that he's on the panel of those that would be a, an appropriate choice uh, for uh, the global deep state uh, recruitment and he has an immaculate impact impeccable background but it's it's the information between the lines that we need to look for uh, with with regard to Mike Morrell because you you can't just paint upon him that he's an evil guy he's one of those guys that looks like a white hat one day and a black hat the next and so he's he's what I'm going to refer to as a gray hat because he's also served with George Bush he's served he knows the Clintons well he he wanted to vote for Hillary Clinton 
Um, he, he promoted Hillary Clinton, he raised money for Hillary Clinton, and he associates with all those members of Hillary Clinton's um, internal circle. So um, we know that this fellow has deep state allegiances, um, but he also comes across as a very, very uh, realistic, um, logical, understanding intelligence man. And I think, to be honest, once we go through this, uh, this small segment, you're going to see that, that uh, most of that is an act. And most of that is for public consumption, uh, so that we review him as an impeccable uh, personnel uh, person, so that he can continue doing what he's doing without interruption. Uh, as we said uh, before, in November 2013, Morrell joined Beacon Global Strategies as a single senior counsel. Uh, in 2018, Beacon named Morrell as the head of its geopolitical risk practice. In this role, um, Morrell advises firms on global developments and what they mean for the company. So now we've got a tie not only to the political end, but we've got a tie to the major corporations in the global arena. So we're immediately, um, our minds immediately lend towards a deep state um, protege, a deep state connection, um, a member of that entire group. And so we need to continue on. And we understand that he became a commentator for CBS News. So now we have a, a CIA director who has worked with both parties, who has been involved um, in many uh, worldly events, as we're going to see, and who also has connections with the media and with uh, uh, with global corporations in their interactions in the world. So, you know, all of the, the red flags are going off. Um, but if you look at this fellow's history, um, you find that it's kind of impeccable, which is, you know, it makes me want to look at him more. Uh, in 2019, Washington Post columnist David Ignatius reported that Morrell, who had been consulting for a U.S. firm that did work with Saudi Arabia, ding, 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 another bell coming up, stepped down from the role following the killing of the Saudi national U.S. resident Washington Post columnist uh, Jamal Khashoggi. Ignatius wrote that Morrell withdrew over concern about the direction that Saudi Arabia was heading. So again, appears like a realist, a step aside before there's, you know, there's obviously a chaos here. I don't want to be involved in it. I'm, I'm above the board. I'm, I'm beyond, you know, question. I'm, 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 I'm going to step away because I don't want to be involved in the chaos. Um, that frankly raises a, a greater um, question for me uh, because now we're, we're starting to deal with, um, you know, is this guy creating these environments and then walking away? Uh, is he perhaps a catalyst for these environments? Um, is, he, is he part of the inception of these environments? Is he one of the masterminds? And I think that's what we're going to come to the realization of, folks, is that he is part and parcel of what I'm going to call the deep state alumni. Uh, as always, behind the scenes, when we have an operating uh, an executive branch or, or um, an operations branch, there's always a think tank behind them. There's always that group of folks that are going to be uh, behind the scenes, uh, pushing the buttons and making the calls. In this instance, we you know we see Mike Morrell and we see him surrounded by Ob Obama's administration. So now, you know, not only has he been a um, firmly set with the, the Clinton administration. He's uh, a Clinton, you know, acolyte. He's raising money for them. He's helping them. He's done the same for the Bushes, and now he's in the Obama cadre. So this is a, a, a lifetime bureaucrat, and we know that that's how the deep state operates, is that they operate in positions of authority that continue across uh, political service, and they, they, they wait out the politicians when they don't agree with them in order to just enact what they, they want to. And if you're a think tank guy behind the scenes, well, I tried to bring up two of the things, two of the links that, that he uh, has in Wikipedia, which is Committee to Investigate Russia and, um, and another cyber program, but they were dead links. So I, I had to go and do some research and, and find out what they really were. And um, what I came back to was Okay, he was member of this group, director of National Intelligence Review on Intelligence, and hang on, let me drag this out of the way a bit. Uh, 
and communications technologies. Well, what the heck was that? I was like, okay, um, I have no idea what that means, but, you know, wonderful seal, Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Well, wait, 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 wait. ODNI? So Clapper's in charge of this. This is this is a deep state organization. This is a deep state creation. The ODNI is a deep state manufacturer that was developed in as early as 1955 and not brought into play until they put Negroponte in that position in in uh, in the late 90s um, because uh, they finally believed that they had had uh, come to that part of the plan, which meant they needed to. Uh, take control of all the intelligence. On August 12, 2013, President Barack Obama issued a presidential memorandum instructing the DNI, James Clapper, to form a review group on intelligence and communications technologies. Obama instructed the review group uh, will assess whether in light of advancements in communications technologies, the United States employs its technical collection capabilities in a manner that optimally protects our national security and advances our foreign policy while appropriately accounting for other policy considerations, such as risk of unauthorized disclosure and or need to maintain the public trust. So folks, let, let's read into this. Okay, we're, you know, we're at um, August in 2013. We, we've, we've now gone through the Benghazi debacle. We're now going into the Hillary Clinton um, circumstance where the, the server has been found out, the emails are in question. We're, we're now in, in full play of our, of our intelligence operations, wanting to bring them together in one cloud. Uh, we're in, in, in the, the deep of, of the execution of the major um, endpoint operations of the deep state in their desire to take this country down. So what do we have? We have Obama who understands that in order for us to take apart um, this political system, we need to know the weak points in in our cyber uh, command, in our communications technology. So how best to do that than to authorize a group to do a study on those weaknesses and to do a review group, do a, re a review of our communications sponsored by who else but the ODNI. So it, DNI review on intelligence communications technologies. So what's going to come out of this is they're going to not only going to appear, give the appearance of trying to resolve these problems, trying to preempt assaults upon the United States, but they're also highlighting all the ways that the, the, that our systems might be manipulated and be being manipulated from within. So, you know, you have to look at who's looking at this material and it's questionable. Okay, let's look at Beacon, Glo uh, Be Beacon Global Strategies. Well, here's the, the other thing that um, points to uh, morale and Beacon Global Strategies is a Washington DC based strategic advisory firm founded by Jeremy Bash, Philippe Rains, and Andrew Shapiro in 2013. Philippe Rains left the firm as of September 2017, according to the firm's website. Beacon Global Strategies specialize in matters of international policy, foreign affairs, national defense, cyber intelligence, and homeland security. Um, if you go deeper into their explanation here and their, their own self-identity, these these folks who join Beacon are merely waiting for new state positions uh, to open up. They're, they are career bureaucrats and they're working at Beacon in those processes that support government because they're basically the the backup, they're the bench, they're, they're the alumni, they're the people that sit in the background and pulled into these major positions as, as required. As September 2013, article in Defense News, now, now we're in September, we were in August uh, with the formation of that ODNI group, now we're in September. Uh, Defense News describes Beacon Global Strategies as unique for Washington consulting firm because of its partner's intent to eventually return to government. Here we go right there. They, they eventually intend to be leaders again. They they are waiting out the current administration. They are operating behind the scenes. They are the alumni who are who are building the plans and writing the plans and putting their finger into the pie from from outside the pie. And that's why I believe we had a meeting between between Morel and John Podesta because he was putting his finger in the pie because he had information that Podesta 
needed and specific. Now, we can ponder as to what that information is, and I believe that that's going to come out here very shortly. It could be Ukraine, it could be um, dossier, it could be uh, information that perhaps, uh, you know, in 2016, um, you wouldn't want information released, or, or maybe he would have information regarding somebody that was going to be investigated. And so he's giving them a heads up. I believe that when you have to meet face to face and you're a former uh, director of the CIA and you're meeting with the campaign manager of the person that I am promoting and I have declared will be the best choice for president in the 2016 election and I'm coming in March in 2016 when the vote is six months away and I'm going to the director of their campaign and I'm a former CIA director I'm kind of really stretching the boundaries of, of what's appropriate. And so, you know, you can imagine what, what happened in that conversation, and I believe soon we'll find out. Beacon's managing director served in a variety of government positions prior to founding or joining the firm. Michael Allen served as majority staff director of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Wow top secret intelligence. Mike Rogers, uh, he previously served for job George W. Bush White House. Okay, so now we got folks that are crossing both political lines. This, this aisle is a fiction, folks. It's a fiction. The deep state created it to keep us separate, to keep Congress from being able to perform, because when you have two votes, you can create a stagnation, and that was their intention. Um, and so the the aisle is just, it's a myth. And so when people talk about, you know, Democrats or Democrats or, or, you know, rhinos or whatever, it means that you've already followed the squirrel. So I apologize for you, but I need to be very clear with you that if you're going to follow the shiny objects that this deep state has created to keep us separate, then you're going to be separate. And that's, that's where they win. Andrew Shapiro is the former and longest serving Senate confirmed United States and Assistant Secretary of State for Political Military Affairs uh, during the presidential transition of Barack Obama. Shapiro was a member of Obama Biden Department of Defense Agency Review Team and during 2008 presidential election, a member of Hillary Clinton's campaign. So, folks, these guys are, are on both sides of the quote aisle, and so we need not be duped by their political affiliations. Um, next, coming up is um, some of the things that have been said along the lines are kind of alarming, kind of, kind of strange, kind of um, hard to comprehend, kind of hard to, um, to determine where, where this fo uh, fellow's allegiances lie. And that's, I believe, um, intended. I, I believe that um, you keep people guessing if you say something, you know, really middle of the road. If you say something very conservative one day and then you say something very um, liberal or progressive the next day and then you say something very, you know, independent um, in, in the midst, you fool people into believing that perhaps you are the person you want them to, to imagine that you are. And this guy is so squeaky clean. Um, it, it's, it's frightening. You know, you, you, it really is frightening. Okay, uh, let's see. My uh, quotes by Mike, uh, Mike Morell. Um, let me start in the paragraph before. Trump's evolving proposal to ban Muslim immigrants from the U.S. has also undermined national security, playing into, quotes, into the hands of the jihadist narrative that our fight against terrorism is a war um, between religions, end quotes. Be con he continued. Now, that's gesticulation and it's dangerous gesticulation um but you can see why uh you know you begin to question this guy you go okay wait a minute that's that's not something that he's speaking out against trump now so i'm going to question his allegiance um quotes my training as an intelligence officer taught me to call it as i see it that is what i did for the cia this is what i am doing now in quotes morale uh, concluded. So what he's saying is, look, look, don't look at me as a CIA officer. I want you to look at me as a citizen. I want you to look at me as a counselor. I want you to look, me, look at me as a middle of the road realist. Um, quotes, our nation will be safer, much safer with Hillary Clinton as president, end quotes. Whoa, whoa, pretty clear. Pretty clear where he stands. Uh, the forceful words from the former top official represent only the latest denouncement of Trump from within the intelligence community. Former CIA Director Michael Hayden, for example, has expressed strong reservations about Trump leading the nation's armed forces. So 
I, I'm beginning to see a little bit of the, you know, the military industrial establishment. I'm seeing the deep state. I'm seeing this person who's got a background that matches completely what the cabal, cabal recruits. So I'm starting to get an idea solidified in my own head that this folk, this fellow is a deep state operative. So let me see if I can, if I can hammer that out. Let me see if, if the, if the material really lends to producing that idea. Well, then we have um, when he's on CBS um, acting as a, you know, a, a, an expert uh, spokesperson in, um, in, in addition to their, uh, to their, um, their current um, folks there at CBS doing the news, we, we have Morell coming to bat for Brennan. And, and saying that Brennan is, is, you know, quote, better than Swiss cheese. And, and you know, he's the creme de la creme. And, and that's, you know, I, I don't know. When you start to back up um, the former, I mean, when you start to back up Brennan, you're immediately choosing a side. And he's saying, well, Brennan is a patriot. So I think right now we have, you know, we're, we're getting true signals that this fella is a deep state operative and that, you know, any of the other statements that he makes to the contrary or, or on the conservative side or on the realistic side are actually a, a lollipop to fool the kids. Uh, more than a dozen former senior intelligence officials are sharply criticizing President Trump's decision to pull former CIA Director John Brennan's security clearance. A letter first reported by CBS News calls it, quote, an inappropriate and deeply regrettable, end quote. CBS News senior national security contributor Mike Morell, former acting and deputy director of the CIA, organized and signed the letter. He joins, quote, CBS this morning, end quote, from Washington to discuss why he thinks Mr. Trump's decision Decisions, a decision is, quote, dangerous, end quote. So he's now proclaimed that he thinks that um, the decisions that President Trump is making are dangerous. I now um, am going to go out on a limb and I'm going to proclaim this guy a deep state operative. And he's a, a lifetime CIA member, but he's a lifetime globalist that is serving the entities of that globalist desire. And so now I need to go along in the, with that concept in my head, that ideal, I'm not saying that I've, I, I've accepted it. I'm saying that, that I'm making that proclamation based upon the information that I've digested. And so now I need to, to look forward into that. But before Obama could formally nominate Brennan to the CIA, the liberal blogosphere erupted in opposition um, you know, to that selection. Um, Brennan's been here before. Four years ago, he was Obama's top choice to lead the CIA. The two men met for the first time as a transition meeting in Chicago. Always Chicago. Isn't that funny? It took time to realize they're almost completely in sync when it came to counterterrorism strategy. They talked about a more surgical approach to fighting al-Qaeda rather than a, a moam all down strategy, as Brennan put it. Clearly on their minds, it's not explicitly stated, was the high-tech tool that it would allow the U.S. to target its enemies without sending in the armies of occupation, the drones. Well, we need to remember that the liberals were angry as heck at Obama because of the drone program, because he, he could target Americans. He would target people overseas. Well, who ran that program? Brennan. Communist. Drone program. Violations of, of, of what civil rights and, and protections. Um, Obama loved him. And so, you know, when you when it comes up between a choice between Brennan and Morrell, who's he going to choose? You know, he's going to choose the one that he he matches up with perfectly. So, you know, what, what we've got here is we've got a, a marriage of Brennan with, with Obama that, frankly, required Morrell to step back into the alumni. And they're always okay with that because they know that they'll be called upon at a later date, and they know they're going to operate from a position where they're going to be making pretty significant dollars um, operating as, as a counselor or expert within those um, corporations. And let's be honest, most of those corporations operate as quasi-governmental operations. Most of them 
have powers and authorities way above that of corporations. Most of them still have security clearances. Most of them still have abilities that, that are way beyond uh, that of a regular citizen. So now you, you see the leagues of power behind the leagues of power. And that's what we need to begin looking for is that you know, look, we can we can unwind the deep state in front of us. We can unwind the people who are currently in the positions, but it's the the entire alumni desk that we're going to have to deal with uh, post that that enacted uh, part of the mission. So, you know, we start getting names like Petraeus. Well, why why didn't Petraeus become CI director? He was probably the the top pick. Well, you know, they they sidelined him. Uh, gee, I wonder who sidelined him. Morel, Brennan, possibly. Um, so what are we looking at? We're looking at the fact that they choose lo losers and winners. They choose exactly who they need to enact the next part of the plan. Um, if John wants it, he, if he wants it, says one of the sources who declined to be named discussing a sensitive presidential personnel appointment before the election in Pedrea scandal, Brennan had let colleagues know he was seriously considering leaving government. He seemed ready to move on after four grueling, stress-inducing years in one of Washington's most high-stakes positions, but since vacancy at the spy agency opened up, there's indications he may have had a change of heart. Quote, he's leaving the door open, says one associate. Other candidates who have been mentioned for the CIA job include Michael Vickers, a Pentagon official who oversees military intelligence, Republican Congressman Mike Rogers, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. And you know those things are not going to happen because those people are not going to be chosen by Obama. You know it's just not going to happen. So, you know, you have to look at who's who's available and who they're going to who they're going to choose. And James Harmon, a f former nine-term member of Congress and national security expert who now runs the Woodrow Wilson Center for International Scholars in Washington and is a member of the Daily Beast's uh, board, none is currently cons considered a serious contender, though that could change. Now, that remember, we need to remember this is pre- of the selection. A confirmation hearing for the next CIA chief would offer a public appraisal for the Obama administration's approach to the war in Al-Qaeda, as well as an assessment of its handling of the turmoil in countries like Libya and Syria. Both Brennan and Morrell have been intimately involved in the administration's most laudable successes, like the raid that led to the death of Obama, uh, Osama bin Laden and its more controversial counter-terror uh, terror tactics, including its relentless drone program. Some believe Morrell would be the safest choice, a career intelligence official with bipartisan credentials, having served as a high-ranking intelligence advisor to both George W. Bush and Obama. Morrell also earned Obama's trust when they went through the planning of the bin Laden operation, and crucially, he has developed good relationships on Capitol Hill. But his history in the Bush administration carries some baggage. Morrell was was present during the infamous August 2001 briefing in which Bush received an intelligence report titled Bin Laden Determined to Strike in the U.S. Moreover, as President Bush's top intelligence briefer, Morrell bears some responsibility for passing on inaccurate reports that Saddam Hussein possessed weapons of mass destruction, a, a massive intelligence failure that may be, many believe drove the U.S. to invade and occupy Iraq. While Morrell is more... Um, for the most part popular within the agency, regarded as a low-key, academically-minded analyst, some former CIA officials worry about a tendency to tell his political superiors what they want to hear. They remember the retired, retired CIA analyst who came out of the woodwork, woodwork to doom Robert Gates' first nomination of the CIA by Ronald Reagan wielding a similar allegation. There is little doubt that Brennan would be the favorite within the White House where he is revered for his slavish devotion to the job and a non-ideological approach to counterterrorism. A physically imposing man with a deep-set eyes, close-cropped hair, and a severe countenance, Brennan commands enormous respect um, and, uh, excuse me, among his colleagues. He is often called Mr. Brennan by younger White House aides, who know he is a veteran of the dark corners of the terror wars. Less thrilled with the appointment would be the upper echelon officials within the intelligence community who say Brennan has in interpreted his close relationship with the president as a license to micromanage their work. Another source of the controversy, no doubt, would be his close association with the administration's targeted killing operations. More than anybody else, Brennan has been the public face of the secret drone program, a lightning rod for liberals and civil libertarians. Okay, now we need to look within this 
this uh, article for something we didn't intend on finding. What we found is that Brennan and Obama were buddy buddy. Okay, so now that we're going forward, and we've now seen Don uh, Bongino's show laying out the crim criminal. Uh, case against Brennan and the fact that Brennan was the one, the CIA was the one that brought the dossier into the White House, we now understand that that would have, ne that would have completely happened because Brennan and Obama are buddy-buddy. They're friends. They're not just colleagues. They, they're one-to-one. They're, they're one -one. So Brennan would have brought that to Obama's attention right away. So what what are we getting now? We're seeing that Morell is you know, shining, uh, uh, shining us on about Brennan's capabilities and saying, la, he's the right one to take the job. And now we know that Obama and Brennan are tight, tight, tight. So now we, we start to see something about morale we didn't anticipate before because of all the situations that he's been in. He's been involved. He was right there with Bush during 9-11. He was right there with the, with the Iraq debacle uh, of the false information. Now we're starting to paint a picture of this fellow, you know, that, that he was there for a, a Osama bin Laden's raid plan. This fellow is a mastermind. This fellow is an operational mastermind. He is a behind-the-scenes um, loyalist. He is a behind-the-scenes uh, lifetime bureaucrat intelligence operative. Well, folks, I'm sorry. Now, now we have to label him part of... The, the military and intelligence industrial complex. We, we just have to. He's, he is part of that conglomerate and, and he's showing himself because they, they have, through arrogance over time, even though he was playing a role and he had 33 years as the, you know, quote, clean person, these folks have gotten really arrogant in the last few years because they believe that they've won and they've made mistakes because of it, because that pride you know, pride comes before the fall, and that's just the way it is. Okay, here's an article by a contributing columnist, Mike Morell, in the Washington Post. Mike Morell, a Post contributing columnist, was deputy director of the CIA from 2010 to 2013, and twice its acting director during that period. The attempted pipe bomb attacks on a number of prominent Americans, followed by the horrific killings in Pittsburgh, have dominated the recent news, and for good news, for good reason, these homegrown attacks on Americans are devastating and hark back to the darkest times in our nation's history. But even amid the cacophony of tragedies we face, we cannot afford to move past the murder of post-contributing columnist, U.S. resident, and Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. And the United States needs to respond beyond simple enforcing a travel ban on those Saudis identified by their own governments as having been involved. Okay, now he's calling us for us to respond to Saudi Arabia. A robust process for formulating this, that response would conclude considerable work by the Central Intelligence Agency. So now he's advocating getting the Central Intelligence Agency in a response to Saudi Arabia. In the early days of his first term, President George W. Bush told me that the CIA had two roles in serving him. The first obvious to most people was to uncover clandestine information the president needed to know to keep the nation secure. The second, less obvious but just as critical, was for the CIA to provide him with all the context and perspective he needed to make informed foreign policy decisions. So here is Mike Morrell saying that, look, we're, we're the ones that need to load the president's ear. We're the ones that need to point him towards the, those possible wars he needs to get involved in or not and get involved in. And here we are, we're pointing him towards another war. And let's be honest, he pointed towards the war with Iraq. Now he's pointing towards Saudi Arabia. I mean, at, at what point do we start to say, okay, this guy's a neocon, he's, he's promoting war, he's, he's loading up these presidents with what they need to hear in order to get them to take certain actions. These two roles have always struck me as an excellent mission statement for the operation and analytic sides of the CIA, respectively, and presidents have used both. The two roles were, for example, fairly, fully harnessed by Barack Obama's administration as we closed in on Osama bin Laden. In that case, the agency had an answer to the obvious question whether bin Laden was hiding at the Abbottabad compound in Pakistan, 
but there were less obvious questions that the president need answered. They, they included what a raid on the compound would mean for U.S.-Pakistan relations, whether taking out bin Laden would lead his followers to conduct attack on U.S. interests, and should the raid result in bin Laden's death, how the various options for disposing of the body would play in the Muslim world. By the end of the policy process, a thick briefing book contained the answers to the questions and dozen others. So they decided to dump the body in the ocean before they shot him. Folks, this is all pre-planned. They did this. They were not going to question him. They were not going to allow him to remain alive. They were going to kill bin Laden. They had, they had no desire to capture him. I hope President Trump is utilizing all the CIA has to offer while thinking through the Khashoggi case. Now he's pleading to Trump. Of course, the CIA should be collecting its own intelligence, providing it to the White House and Congress. For instance, what are the Saudis' plan for when Khashoggi walked into their consulate in Istanbul? CIA Director Gina Haspel may well already know, since she reportedly had listened to a recording of the killing. Whoa! Whoa! Man, how to throw, you know, the director of the CIA under the bus right there. Who in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, knew about the operation in advance? Most importantly, did Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman know, and did he subsequently lie about it to Trump, who in Riyadh was involved in the initial cover-ups? What is the status of the Saudis so far deemed responsible, including the Crown Prince's closest uh, aide, Saad al Qatani? Have they been fired from their government positions? Are they in custody? Wow. This, this is really uh, alarming stuff to be writing. It's, it's you know, you, you're, you're on the sidelines, and what you're doing is you're using your, your former position, you're using your ability at being at the, the Mockingbird media to now play, put leverage upon President Trump with regard to Saudi Arabia. Uh, it seems to me like you, you're, you're now getting into a position of not just being, you know, called upon to give advice. You're now trying to... Um, to, to map out uh, what President Trump should be doing. MBS took a small step forward pal uh, placating critics Thursday when the kingdom released three female human rights activists from prison while they were away trial. Eight other women who campaigned for women to drive and other issues remain in detention. Among the previously undisclosed findings, some member of the Saudi strike team that was sent to Istanbul received training in the United States, according to the U.S. and Saudi sources. The CIA has cautioned other government agencies that some of this special operations training might have been conducted by Tier 1, an Arkansas-based company under a State Department license. A U.S. plan to train and modernize the Saudi intelligence services is also on hold, pending State Department approval of a license. This project was developed by Culpeper National Security Solutions, a unit of DINCORP, with help from some prominent former CIA officials. No work on the project has been done. Wait, wait. With help from some former prominent CIA officials. And then immediately in the next sentence, it says, Mike Morell, former acting director of CIA, was publicly identified as Culpepper's chairman of the board in 2017, but no longer holds that position. A source said Morell withdrew within day of Khashoggi's murder. Folks, I need to start seeing a pattern. This fella steps back and resigns his position when things are about to blow up. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Okay, Tier 1 Group and DINCORP are both owned by affiliates of Cerberus Capital Management based in New York. The company wouldn't confirm or deny whether any of the 17 perpetrators of Khashoggi's killing, who were sanctioned by the Treasury Department, have been trained under the Tier 1 contract. Okay, so now he's trying to bring to alert Khashoggi's killing, and the CIA trained the guys who went and killed him. So, I'm sorry, we're, we're getting into really strange territory here uh, with the former director of, this, of the CIA, and we need to understand that there's, um, it's really strange stuff that's going on here. We now have somebody who's a mastermind behind the scenes, 33-year career CIA uh, person who's been the director several times, who's close to Obama, who's close to Bush, who's close to Saudi Arabia, who, who was in on the Benghazi, Osama bin Laden assault, um, the 9-11 assault, the, the, the faked um, information about WMD in Iraq. Are we starting to get a picture of who this fellow is? I mean, it, it really starts to, to uh, bring all the things together in our eyes, doesn't it? 
Um, this is an interesting article, article that's coming up. I would love for you guys to look over this. I think I'll go over it on another show. Uh, but this has to do with the, with the agency, where that idea from Culpepper came together. They were actually a private agency of citizens like yourself and myself uh, who had uh, particular skills and formed a clandestine agency during World War II uh, to fight against um, the Germans and and uh, and the enemies of the United States. And very interesting history we have here. So if you get a chance, we'll go over that, okay? Okay, now this is an important document that comes out of Obama's uh, archives. You can read the the, the site up here, the URL is ObamaWhiteHouseArchives.gov, okay? So this is a PDF right out of his archives. I'm going to go to, pay, you know, approximately page 20, I think it is. So bear with me. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're looking at a document that, remember, we put together this council that's supposed to review our, our you know, sponsored by the ODNI. It's supposed to review our our communications and our technology capabilities so that it identifies, you know, problems that identifies, you know, where we need to go in the future. I think personally from reviewing this document, what you're going to find is this group was slated by Obama with finding out exactly how we could take down this country. And I, I want you to, um, if Obama ever claims that he didn't know about this, um, that he had no knowledge, we're gonna we're gonna do away with that concept right here. Okay, I'm on page 19. In our view, the current storage by the government of bulk metadata creates potential risk to public trust, personal privacy, and civil liberty. We recognize that the government might need access to such metadata, which should be held instead either by private providers or by private third party. This approach would allow the government access to the relative information when such access is justified and thus protect national security without unnecessarily threatening privacy and liberty. Consistent with this recommendation, we endorse a broad principle for the future as a general rule without senior policy review, the government should not be permitted to collect and store mass undigested non-public personal information about U.S. persons for the purpose of enabling future queries and data mining for foreign intelligence purposes. Okay, we also recommend special reforms that will provide Americans with greater safeguards against intrusions into their personal domain. Uh, we endorse new steps to protect American citizens gain, engaged in communications with non-U.S. persons. We recommend important restrictions on the ability of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, FISC, to compel third parties such as telephone service providers to disclose private information to the government. We endorse similar restrictions on the issuance of national security letters by which the Federal Bureau of Investigation now compels individual and organizations to turn over certain otherwise private records, recommending prior judicial review except in emergencies where time is of the essence. We recommend concrete steps to promote transparency and accountability and thus to promote public trust, which is essential in this domain. Legislation should be enacted requiring information about this surveillance program to be made available to the Congress and to the American people to the greatest extent possible, subject only to the need to protect classified information. We also recommend that legislation should be enacted authorizing telephone internet and other providers to disclose publicly general information about orders they receive directing them to provide information to the government. Such information might disclose the number of orders that providers have received, the broad categories of information produced, and the number of users who information has been produced. In some vein, in the same vein, we recommend that the government should just prop publicly disclose on a regular basis general data about orders it has issued in programs whose existence is unclassified. Okay, so they're laying out right here the way that FISA could be used inappropriately and that they're recommending that that be ended forever. And this is Obama's White House archives, the report that he ordered to be done by who? The ODNI, which included what? Mike Morrell. Mike Morrell was in on writing this this report. So, okay, we've got we've now got a violation that we have seen come about for the last you know four or five years that follows this paradigm. So either they knew it and ignored it, or they knew it and used it because they knew exactly how to violate a person's rights. 
They knew exactly what they needed to do to take Trump down. And so, folks, the the non-denial denial doesn't work anymore because this is a report that the President Obama ordered them to prepare, and it was delivered to him. As you can see, the date on that is 12-12-2013 in his archives. So he's already received it as of 2013. He already knows this. He already knows exactly how to take down America. And he can't deny it because it's in his own archives. He ordered it. Tried denying that. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. We've got um, we've got a fair amount of articles left, but you know, um, it's going to take an interesting twist here. We we need we need to understand you know what we're dealing with. We need to understand where this is going. Why why are we why are we here and and how do how do we get here and and where do we go from this point? And so we're bringing up an article by nationalinterest.org about, uh, about Morrell. And let's, um, let's uh, look at some differing perspectives as we go forward. We're going to start to see some, some perspectives that not, aren't necessarily uh, that, that squeaky clean concept, you know, that start to raise our hackles, that, that we begin to see some of the things that we, you know, basically were were shrouded by a really clean personality, a real public portrayal, a, a manufactured uh, view of, of this squeaky clean person before you. And so that's what we're gonna begin to investigate, okay? Okay, come on up, article. Okay, we'll go on to the next article, so that one does not appear to be coming up. Okay. As this next article loads, we need to take a moment and just um, thank folks for, for showing up. Uh, we really do always appreciate and, and understand that, that without, you know, without listeners, without other patriots, none of this matters. You know, I could be talking to myself. And so, it's, it's very important that, that we um, comprehend and understand the gravity of the position in which we stand. And, you know, we're patriots trying to stand up for the nation that we love. And so, you know, there's been some just some horrible things going on that, that need our attention. And um, we, we can't allow these things to continue. And so we here at, at Patriot Soapbox and Powerful Words with Caleb are, are doing our absolute best to drum up you know, that which we need to see. And I, I have to say, I'm, I, I'm frankly um, overwhelmed and humbled by what the Lord has allowed me to do in, in revealing some of these interests, um, some of these issues that have been remained hidden underneath the, the tapestry that they would have us look upon and, and be mollified, you know, be, um, be, be at peace. But none of this, none of this puts me at peace seeing this. This puts me in, in the, um, frankly, in the emotional mindset of, of wanting to, to fix these guys, you know, let's clean this up. Let's, let's go forward. Well, national interest is having a little time, um, launching this article. So, so let's see what we can move on to. Okay. Bear with me. I'm going to stop the share for a second. Because that article's having a hard time loading. Must be a lot, a lot of um, script on that art on that article. So, what would we do without JavaScripting and applets and <laughs> all the other stuff? <laughs> Use up all our cash. It's using my cash. Stop using my cash. Okay, I've stopped the share for a moment, and we will see what comes up here. Okay, let, let's reflect on, on what we've seen. We've now seen a character who obviously moves in, I don't want to say in the shadows, but he moves, he's pretty, um, he's like a daywalker. He's a... Uh, he has, you know, he has power and authority to, to, you know, operate within the mechanism, within the machinery, uh, with with some kind of elusiveness, some 
some capacity to remain hidden. And uh, wow, there's a friend <laughs> faced with that that mug once again. Well, you know, we we love you folks, and we do greatly appreciate the opportunity to share with you. Um, you know, let me let me see if I can get this launched again um, because, you know, after all, we need to continue on the material. We need to see exactly where it's going to take us. So we we thank you for for the opportunity to share with you. Okay, let's get this launched again here. <laughs> we should find out in the morning. Retrieve it in the morning. Okay, so let's get a share going here again. Sorry, for whatever reason, my bandwidth has been squeezed. I, I think I may have caught somebody's attention, <laughs> as, as often happens. You know, you, you, they, they really don't want you showing this stuff, and so, you know, you just have to deal with it. I am not in charge, and I know it. But that's okay. I don't need to be in charge. Just want to share some information. This this site's pretty interesting. It's um it's nationalinterest.org, and this is their blog. They do some pretty interesting blogs. Um, let's close this page when, as it comes up, okay? But really interesting articles. Um, everything's up to date. China has many arc aircraft. Um, you know, good place for for some perspective. A good place for some some up to date information. Okay, let's get this one closed, and we'll move on. Okay. Look, we know very clearly that this deep state profits from wars. They want wars. They need the wars. Um, they're going to fight everybody who, who wants to stop the wars, and, and POTUS has made it very clear that we no longer want to be involved in wars that, you know, A, are unwinnable, um, B, don't have an, an end game in sight, and C, are, you know, are meant for 30-day or 90-day operations and turn into 10-year or 20-year or, or lifetime operations. Um, you know, we should not be losing men and women or assets or expending them in wars that we should, we, we should not be involved in. In fact, you know, their whole concept is, is drive us into, you know, a world conflagration that in which we end up, you know, basically invalidating each other and, and they they end up winning the prize, which is control over everything after, after we're done in, right? So uh, we're not, I don't want to play that game anymore. I think it's, I, I'm so thankful that we have a president that, that understands that. And he's spoken about it in the last couple of weeks, which I, I got to give him credit for. He's, you know, the first president that's really addressed that recently and said, look, I got to send these people into, into war. And then I got to watch them come back off that plane, off the back when their families freak out and throw themselves on the coffins. You know, that's, that's not something I want to do. Uh, who is Michael Morrell? Uh, far from protecting American security, Morrell has uh, repeatedly undermined it. Now you can see why they don't want me showing this article. So let's continue. No doubt Putin is playing Trump. Uh, yes, former CIA director uh, Mike Morrell is indeed at it again during the presidential campaign. He repeatedly uh, attacked Donald Trump as an unwitting agent of the Russian Confederation. In the same vein, anonymous CIA officials have supposedly provided evidence of our new president's nefarious dealings with the Kremlin and its agents. Okay, so Morrell's now coming out championing the Russia, Russia, Russia theme. So that um, immediately that, you know, we know there's problems. Okay. And it's referring to anonymous CIA officials. Look, Morrell's the one saying this. So come on. Uh, you know, you don't need anonymous CIA officials anymore, right? Didn't Trump's own lawyer, Mike Cohen, meet in the Prague with a Kremlin agent in, age, in August of 2016? And isn't that final proof of the ongoing secret liaisons between the tycoon and the tyrant? Now, this is 
this is Morell speaking. So we need to understand, folks, that didn't he meet with Podesta in March of 2016? And now he's referring to August of 2016. Did, did, he, did he mention that he met with Podesta? Did, you know, are we hearing any of that information? Are we, are we understanding that you know, there's, there's some reasons why he would say this? Afraid not, but it's deja vu 15 years ago. Morrell vetted and took to the White House a preliminary report that 9-11 hijacker Mohammed Atta met with an Iraqi intelligence officer, Ahmed Samir, and Ani at the Iraqi embassy in Prague in April of 20, 2001. Both reports have turned out to be bogus. Okay, now we've got a guy, we've got a continuation of, of a guy that's supposed to be, you know, the most brilliant guy, the, the most above board guy, and yet he's a he's a bum scoop deliverer. He he delivers false material to to um, to the presidents. Now, what was his job? Wasn't it loading the president's ear for for uh, making proper um, and and uh, responsive diplomatic decisions? And now we see that um, he just continues to to bring in. Bum scoop reports. On August 6, 2001, Morell served as CIA debriefer for President Bush's most critical ever presidential daily briefing, the one that read Bin Laden determined to strike in the U.S. It was essential that he impress upon Bush the importance of the memo, but he didn't. Morell recollected in his memoir that NSC staffer Steve Began, who accompanied Morell to the Crawford Ranch where Bush was vacationing, apparently relayed uh, to the others that he, Morell, had indicated to the president there's no need to worry about an Al Qaeda attack on the homeland. Okay, wait a minute. He wants to tell Bin Laden is determined to strike in the U.S., but yet the message they give the president is that there's no need to worry about Al Qaeda attack on the homeland. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. We we now have smoking gun. Morrell himself directly in, observed that in retrospect, quote. I did not treat it as a hair on fire or action forcing peace, and the president did not read it that way either, end quotes. Okay, we've got a bump scoop deliverer. We've got somebody who's obviously um, global, you know, has global leanings, crosses the aisles, has background in the CIA for 33 years, has been the head of the CIA, is close to Obama, is close to Bush, has, has operated on the, the Mockingbird Networks, writes articles of his own desire and pushes bum scoop reports and is in on Obama's team to develop a, a list, a, a organized report of all of our weaknesses in the United States and, and how, to, how to overcome them. So I'd say we got a full, full uh, five scale alert there, wouldn't you? Surely Bush would not give, given the assessment that Morell's colleague counterterrorism expert Kofa Black gave to Condoleezza Rice weeks earlier, an attack is impending. Wait, Kofa Black, his, his colleague, said an attack is impending and this country needs to go to war uh, war footing now. Wait a minute, there's there's some severe problems here. We got, we got folks who are playing different people different ways. They're loading them up. They're loading their lips, folks. They're loading them with the with the words they want them to say. They wanted they wanted Condoleezza Rice to go to Bush and be the one that says we gotta go to a war footing. Do you see what they're doing? You know, it's 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 the the old Jedi mind trick, you know, loading people's lips with what, what you want them to say to bring about what, what you want to happen. So um, you know this is a an in, intriguing article because it, it really lays out uh, some of these things that, that Morell has been involved in that just, you know, they're, they're not about board. I mean, 2003 Iraq war provided an opportunity for Morell to advance his career. Leading a group of CIA analysts, he was assigned to help prepare Secretary of State Colin Powell's February 5th UN Security Council speech. Okay. So now we see he's loading Colin Powell's lips. Wow. Uh, so over and over again, justifying the forthcoming invasion of Iraq, a passage in the speech affirmed that Iraq possessed biological weapons and the capability to rapidly produce more, many more. False. We still don't know who was directly responsible for leaving this passage in Powell's speech. However, Morell was in charge of the CIA analysts who were vetting it. In 2015, Morell apologized to Powell. Folks, if you go down in this article, what you can also find is that he was the one 
that changed the talking points for Susan Rice. And he denied it, and they caught him. They caught him in a lie. So are we beginning to, to solidify our understanding of who this Morel character is? Are we beginning to understand how this deep state operates and loading people's lips and that they, they may not be your best friend they may be working for the cabal and they may come in and say something or give you a report in their expert opinion that's made to to force you to come to some act that the the cabal wants you to perform that you don't even know what that that you're being pushed you don't even know you're a puppet you don't see the puppet strings because you're being worked by that dark master whispering in your ear you know that that uh that nefarious character with the, you know, the the fangs and the and the long claws, you know, <laughs> whispering behind your throne. That's that's a horrible realization that that that's, you know, we have that type of wickedness here in our country uh, operating in our own government. Um, but it's happening, right? You can see right here, and the the guy looks like he's squeaky clean. If you ever see him on TV, he looks like the squeakiest clean, you know, Mr. Wilson you you ever seen, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a frightening thought um, because we, we now know that our eyes can be fooled. And so we start to suspect our own perceptions. We start to suspect what they, what, not only what they're telling, or telling us, but what we're perceiving. And so, you know, this is a time of, of need for uh, really intense discernment. And for some reason, they do not want me to get beyond this article because, they, you know, I'm just sitting here on old man where it just will not go to the next article so we're going to try to go to the next article here and just get off of this subject and go forward timing me out Okay, so if we had to stop here, what would what would we have learned? Well, we've learned that this guy is behind the scenes operative. We've learned that this guy delivers a message that's designed to produce a specific response, and it's really intelligently designed that way. And We've learned that he works for organizations that are a cadre of alumni that span um, both both parties um, that that have allegiances and histories in many uh, administrations and have worked with both the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, and many others. Um, that in itself is is alarming um, to see that we have this is the deep state we're beginning to see the organization behind the organization we're beginning to see see the the bench we're beginning to see the members who are sitting behind the scenes moving the chess pieces you know if you want to see who i believe who um president trump is playing in five level chess and with q and and playing this is who he's playing. He's playing these members. There you go. The Cypher Brief. Mike Morell, the former acting director and deputy director of Central Intelligence Agency, is one of the nation's leading national security professionals. With extensive experience in intelligence and foreign policy, he has been at the center of our nation's fighting against terrorism. Uh, it, it's work to prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and its efforts to respond to trends that are altering the international landscape, including the Arab Spring, the rise of China, and the cyber threat. Politico has called Mike Michael the Bob Gates of his generation. During his 33-year career at CAA, Michael served as deputy director for over three years, a job in which he managed the agency's day-to-day -day operations, represented the agency at White House and Congress, and maintained the agency's relationships with intelligence services and foreign leaders around the world. Michael also served twice as acting director, leading CIA when Leon Panetta was named Secretary of Defense, and again after David Proteus left government. Michael's senior assignments at CIA, also including serving for two years as director of intelligence 
the agency's top analyst and for two years as executive director of CIA's top administrator managing human resources, the budget, security, and information technology for an agency the size of a Fortune 200 firm. So, you know, he has the credentials. He, he has the credentials. There, there's no doubt about that. Okay. Let's see what we've got. We've got a blog. Okay, we've got a, a tweet here. I uh, can't remember what the tweet is. So let's see if we can get that to come up here. So we've got, you know, we've got a public perception of this man that he's he is the Eagle Scout. He is the best contender. And they and they continue to portray it. Good teeth, good suit, you know, proper backgrounds, all boxes checked. Um, you know, gets along with everybody. Uh, but we see a much different understanding when we look behind the scenes and look at, at the actions and the things that he's been involved in. You know, when you start changing talking points and you start delivering, um, you know, professional briefs that are, you know, telling people to, to get into war, um, you know, you have to be questioned. You have to be questioned at, a, at an extent that's much greater than than just the public perception or that which the MSM wants to deliver to it. So as this tweet comes up, I believe this is, oh, this is Mike Morell's tweet. It basically says, you know, I'm the I'm peanut butter. <laughs> you would be grateful to have me on any bread. You know, that's, you know, when you get somebody's profile and they're, they're the just the, the next best thing to, you know, a slice of cheese, you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing to watch, you know, how, how we really do have this public persona on social media that can be absolutely false. And we have no idea who the real person is. And that's, that is kind of frightening, isn't it? See, he's got a podcast as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to not going to show you that, but you can find Mike Morell's podcast. Um, he is out there. He's 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 out there. Okay, Podesta emails. You know, this is stuff we need to look at because you know WikiLeaks was. Um, you know, I I, I got to say I pray for Julian Assange because, you know, what, what are you going to do? You know, what, just just for the heck of it, let's that we got to look at these um, these emails. Uh, really strange conversation because it's like, you know, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you go? No, I didn't go. Okay, come on over. Well, wait a minute, I'm here. <laughs> it's kind of a strange conversation. So when you get the chance, look these over. It's on uh, wikileaks.org. You can look at the the exchange. It's just, it's strange. It's, you know, it's like they're, they're talking in, in code behind the code, you know? It's like they're talking, uh, uh, they're, they're sending each other messages about, you know, hey, we're going to meet here, but, we're, you know, why don't I come to your house? No, I'm at Tenley Circle. No, I'm in McLean. No, you know, it's all a, it's all a smoke screen, you know. So what does that say to you? It says that he knows that, that uh, Podesta has um, CIA background because he wouldn't be talking to him in a manner that we couldn't understand if we, if we read it unless he knew that Podesta understood and vice versa. Um, you don't have a conversation with a CIA man of 33 years and expect him to just say exactly what he means. You know, it's just not going to happen. You know, <laughs> if you're another agent, he's going to go, hey, Twilight. Going <laughs> you know, to say, say things in between the lines. So, you know, we, we're, we're going to know the truth. It's going to take a little bit to get it out. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be revealed here in time. Um, but as we go forward, we're going to begin to see it. Okay, um, this one was really the one that woke me up. Okay, now we've got we've gotten this report. We've gotten Mike Morell and and the ODNI responsible for this report that's delivered to to Obama that tells them all of our, our weaknesses and strengths in our uh, telecommunications and and our um, IT environment. We've got we've seen that in the archives. We've seen that it says, you know, that the the FIS can be leveraged the, uh, through the FISA process. 
that can be violated. It's all been laid out for them so that they, you know, basically it's here's the mastermind plan. This is what we're recommending you do. You see what I'm saying? Here, here's what you need to do. Um, it's given to you in a format that, that looks like I'm trying to tell you, uh, you know, utilize this to, to protect the nation and fix the nation. Um, anybody that looks at it can, can come to that conclusion. But if you're looking at it for the nefarious cover-up, you're saying, okay, the mastermind has now handed us the plan in order to do just that. Okay. So he, it said in his Wikipedia file that he was at U.S. Cyberdome. So I was like, okay, why wasn't that in Wikipedia? You can't find it in Wikipedia anymore. Um, it said that he was on a, uh, the committee to investigate Russia. I was like, okay, I need to find these things. So I found the U.S. Cyberdome, and that's really interesting stuff, folks. That's, that's where we need to go. We need to understand that this is what they're doing. Okay, this is where they're headed. If you go to the investigaterussia.org, you begin to see the inklings of, you know, you know, really dastardly organization that's, you know, that's got, you know, many members deep. It's, it's, it's got members. It's got, it's got power. It's got authority. You know, if you, if you go into this, you're going to see that these folks are really have a, a really deep bench they really know what they're trying to do and that what they're trying to do is they desperately need us to fight with russia they desperately need us to you know to begin that world war three they they need to do whatever they can to stop us from from getting to that point where we need to go and so we see them lining up uh we see you know things like cyber dome we see uh we see this, you know, these investigative teams. We see these reports. We see these behind-the-scenes organizations, and none of them is alarming as what the the Hill has put out here on uh, August sixth of this year about former DHS intelligence leaders launch group to protect presidential campaigns from foreign interference. What does that tell you? You know, in that in that reverse linguistics that they have been using. It tells us that they're they're launching a master team to do just that, to to intervene in in American politics, because they're going to highlight all the mistakes and they're going to highlight exactly how to bypass um, the election, how to, how to interrupt the election, how to counter countermand the election. And when you start seeing the individuals on this list, you it just it's the who's who of, of deep statism. It's 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 all of them. It's Mike Morrell at all. You know, it's everybody involved. It's it's calling all calling all parts forward. And so, what we're what we need to do is we need to understand um, what we're dealing with here. That behind the scenes, these folks they don't have our our best interest at heart. They don't care about us that what they're doing is they're planning the downfall of america and they're using their best and brightest to do it and that's just the way it's going to be they're you know we need to come to grips with that we need to understand that that's the case um, and they're developing large groups to sit there and plan it out and they're calling it exactly the opposite of what it is they're saying that this group is coming together to protect protect the presidential election and in fact what we're seeing is the exact opposite they're they're discovering all the ways to undermine a presidential election and this one is targeted at 2020 and it has all of the cadre from the former administrations in it so you need to look at this article on the hill it's um august 6th by maggie miller um it's a, it's a real interesting article And then Cyberdome, we, we now have come faced with Cyberdome. Okay, it's gonna give me that article now. So two former Homeland Security Secretaries along with other former officials, top officials that formed that organization. Okay, so look into it. Okay, US Cyberdome. This Cyberdome, is a conglomerate, it's a business 
currently run by um, a retired uh, general. Uh, this is the about page. Um, I'm going to go back to the home page. But this lays out all the characters. It's pretty interesting. Again, you'll, you know, you start to see all the characters that they have amassed into a corporate um, but when I'm when I say corporate now, I'm talking quasi-governmental. You know that that is, if you look at it from one angle, you, you see U.S. government. If you look at it from another angle, you see a corporation. And these folks are um, they're the epitome of cyber experts, and they're creating what's you know a cyber dome that that is a business that is going to be in charge of cyber and, and who best to run cyber but AI, of course. And so, you know, now we've had two days ago, we or three days ago, we had um, POTUS announced that a, a cooperative Google program out in California has has come up with a, an advancement in AI that's, that's way beyond its time. So we got all these guys freaking out. They're all freaking out because now POTUS is getting ahead of the curve on them. And, you know, we're going to start to see some of these folks crack. I mean, if we've got 120,000 sealed indictments, um, what we're going what we're going to see in those sealed indictments, I think it's a lot of family members, a lot of these network members, a lot of the bench uh, folks who are behind the scenes that we don't, we don't normally get a, a view of. Cyberdome is a 501c4 organization providing cybersecurity at no cost to political parties, elected officials, and candidates across party lines to ensure the integrity of the process, confidence, and outcomes funded through donations. We help to put your money where your democracy is. Okay, so now government's going to be in charge of the elections. They're going to provide the security, and they've got a group that is is powerhouse group that, that according to the Hill, is, is going to be running everything behind the scenes that are all former administrative officials. You know, I, I'm sorry, I, I immediately have a problem. You know, the new U.S. Cyberdomes Group Board of Advisors will be chaired by Department of Homeland Security, uh, Jay Johnson. I've, I've automatically got a problem right there. Other members of the board will include former DHS Secretary Chertoff, uh, Director Mike Morrell, uh, James Clapper, uh, General Francis Taylor, you know, we've, we've got, what are they doing? They're developing a new uh, cyber corporation, a hybrid government corporation of bench members that are going to be in charge of our elections, in, in charge of holding, handling all the cybersecurity for our elections. While U.S. Cyberdome's initial efforts will be focused on securing 2020 presidential campaigns against threats, the group aims to eventually assist all national political campaigns. Come on, folks. This is so much bigger than we imagine. They're going to take over the entire campaign process. They're going to they're going to own it from end to end. You know, because they own the corporate money raising end, and now they're going to own the the actual elections, the the cybersecurity, so that it's all going to be handled electronically, and they can change the results, you know, as needed. It's just to me, this is this is much larger than we imagine, folks. Um, we need to come to grips with that and we need to understand that we need to pray man because this thing is it's so huge there's so many folks involved in this in the in this deep bench there's so many powerful people involved in this that when they get brought down they're they're going to be a force to reckon with and so you know i i pray for i pray for q i pray for potus that, that that the plan um, is going to handle handle all the calamity that's behind the scenes that we don't see. You know, we see the surface. I mean, I see a lot of characters that are bad characters, but boy, we're looking at this cadre. These these are powerful people. These these are the folks that are are playing the game of chess. Um, what we've been seeing are just actual pawns and bishops. These are the folks who are actually moving the parts. And uh, I need to. See send a notice to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you. And may he bring you down. And may he, he make sure that this nation is returned to solid footing in righteousness and truth. 
I thank you for the time to present this to you tonight, and, and I apologize for my limited assets. You know, I'm just a guy on a laptop with, uh, with you know, <laughs> limited ability to, to research and find things, but, you know, I'm just truly blessed to have you. I'm truly blessed to have the Lord involved in my life and directing me to these insights, because um, without that, I wouldn't have anything to share, but the, the good news of the gospel. And so, you know, you can count on that on me. So um, I appreciate your time. And uh, I thank you, and I, I pray the Lord's blessings over your lives, and uh, may He protect you and provide for you, and watch over you this week, your finances, your relationships, uh, your health, and uh, and your prosperity. In Jesus' name, I pray. Have a wonderful evening. I'm going to go ahead and stop the share here, and go ahead and end this meeting. And I do, um, I do really do appreciate the opportunity to come before you, you know, and share some of this information. I mean, we all get there together, right? We don't get there alone. So it's going to be really important going forward that uh, we begin to work together in a seamless fashion because, you know, we are the news. Uh, we we are the people. Uh, we are America. Uh, we are America. And uh, we, we've forgotten that. And it's time, time to remember. So I uh, thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and, and stop this when it of course, when it wants to stop, it stops, you know. Round and round she goes, and you do what you got to do until it, until it happens. So thank you so much uh, for the opportunity, and I, again, I do greatly.